All right, so this is gonna be an advanced workout. So why don't you play after me on A. You play. So I'm gonna show you how I'm doing this. So I'm, I got my fingers and I just let them fall on the strings. And then my bow's moving. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So my fingers are just falling on the string like that. Not pressing hard, just, just, just muting. And then this is like light. So we can go eight. Change it up, up, down, up, down, down, up. So watch this one, and then do it with me. You try Check this one, this is tricky. Up, down, up, up, down, up, up. This is really tricky. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. So to do D and D. Alright, so I'm gonna play some lines and want you to play back to me. They're gonna be tricky, alright? Tricky rhythm. Any bowing you want, doesn't matter. That's a finger twister right there. Ha! Check out my bow on that. That's a trick. moving the whole time. Ha! There we go. Extra credit if you sing and play at the same time.
form of C sharp. Just scales, but they're hard to play right in rhythm. On E, sorry cellos, <laughs> but you're advanced, you can handle it. <laughs> say don't use the E for the cellos but you're advanced <laughs> there's an F sharp for the cellos <laughs> all right cool so check this out since you're advanced I'm moving fast so I would expect that you're not able to do all this right but that's the point because you're probably used to not even being challenged you're probably used to like oh it was too easy for me oh it was too easy for me everything's too easy right so this is the whole point of like making it a little more interesting, you know, cause like I was that kid, I was that kid before where I was like, oh, why can't somebody challenge me more? And uh, I loved all my Suzuki repertoire. I loved all the classical repertoire. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. But I also realized like I wanted to be able to do other things, you know? So, so that's part of, that's part of my function this week is to show you how you can uh, expand and challenge yourself, but also be creative. So, um, so we're using a scale right now. We're using a scale. It's the D major scale, right? Basically, that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G when C's and F's are sharp. So that means you don't have to just think about the scale as like this, right? You can also think it can start from E. So do that. Play, play a D major scale from E to E. E to E, right? Remember, you got... And then F sharp to F sharp. Do that, F sharp to F sharp. Where there's two sharps, C's and F's, right? G. Right, still D major scale, but it starts on every note. You play it. Any range, also every octave, right? So there's no reason, so you can always go down the octave, go up the octave. Uh, B. And then play it down the octave. You can take it up. If you want to really punish yourself. Uh, let's do C sharp. You play it down the octave. Right? So the point is, we can play that D major scale all the way up and down from the lowest note on our instrument to the highest note on our instrument that we want to go to, whatever that is. So for cellos, where would you start? C sharp. Same thing with violas, you start on C sharp, because the lowest note on a cello is a C. Lowest note on a viola is a C. So we start on some kind of C, but since C's are sharp, we start there. So you would start here. And you go as high as you can on a cello or on a viola, or as high as you want to go in the key of D major. So just do that. Now, violins, you're going to start on G. You can go as high as you want. I mean, you don't have to go up to fifth position, but if you want, you can. And you can also do this in every position, right? So you can say, well, let me play in D major from second position, right? So if you're in second position on violin, then we start on note B on first finger. Here's a challenge for you. Play the key of D major going as high as you can in second position. That's hard to do if you haven't practiced it. And then do the same thing in third position. Fourth. I realize this is different for cellos because the whole position game is different on cello. But still, as a cellist, you can still try this idea. 
right? You can play in second position, third position, and then try to go across the, the all four strings. So we're going to do this against, I'm going to show you a sequence and you try to play the sequence with me. And then we're going to get, we're going to get more um, fancy with it. So you can do it with me or you can do it after me. I'm going to do solidarity with cellos and violas. We're going to start on C sharp. So violins, you can do, if you want to challenge yourself, you can do it in second position, third position, any position you want. I'm going to play in third position, but you can be in first position. I don't care. So play after me, C sharp. D. If you can sing. Improvise your bow. Change the bow up. My people, I love it. Advanced crew. So eventually where we want to go with this is now that you kind of know the scale, because everybody told you like you thought you knew the scale, but that's not knowing the scale. Knowing the scale is being able to play every possible sequence. Like I just gave you one sequence, but it could be a different sequence. It could be like, like this, let's do this sequence first. So, um... I'll let you play it after me. And then once we get tight on it, we'll, we'll move faster on it. So, but it's basically one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight, three, five, seven, nine. It's like a SAT question. You know about the SAT, scholastic aptitude test? There's a real question on the SAT that, that'll go like this. Complete the sequence. <laughs> one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight, three, five, seven, nine, four, six, eight, ten. And then you got to finish it. What's next? Five, seven, nine, eleven. Right? It's just like a mathematical pattern. But the thing is, that mathematical pattern we can put it on the instrument. So we're no matter where we start. If we start on G, then it's like one, three, five, seven, and then we do A, two, four, six, eight. It's not fingers. It's just a number, right? Three, five, seven, nine. So we're gonna do that pattern. Okay. A. I'm gonna change the rhythm every time. <laughs> but it's a sequence. Let's go down from F sharp. So once you practice lots of sequences, we'll do more of those sequences in the key, but you see how this makes it much more interesting, right? And eventually you can play sequences, but you can also avoid sequences. So if I do an improvisation, and I'm going to have you do this here in a minute. If I'm going to do an improvisation, I'm going to pick a rhythmic unit. 
In this case, it's going to be the, uh, I don't know, eighth note. Is it an eighth note? That's either a 16th or an eighth. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to improvise using recurring those notes, <laughs> recurring eighth notes or recurring 16th notes. And I want you to hear it. You're going to listen for sequences, but you're also going to listen for the avoidance of sequences. All right. <laughs> Does that make sense? So what I'm doing is I'm picking A, B, C, D, E, F, G when F and C are sharp, and then I'm just choosing notes to play, and, and I do it fast because I've practiced like this for 35 years. Actually, since I was about 16. So how long is that? 35 years. <laughs> so I started playing violin when I was like about five, Suzuki. And, um, but when I was in like about 16, 15 or 16, my friends started a rock band and, uh, I was jealous of my friends because I was like, what's wrong with this picture? Because like I was playing Paganini and like, you know, all that stuff. And, um, I have friends that picked up like a guitar and a bass and a drum set or whatever. And they had like one lesson, but they started a rock band. They had one lesson and I went into the rock band with the drummer and the guitar player. And I didn't know what they were doing because they were improvising and they knew about the chords of the songs. And they were like, you know, they had this whole other world and this whole other language. So I had this idea about myself. I thought, well, I guess I'm, there's just something wrong with me. <laughs> I guess I just wasn't born this way, but that was not true. Actually. I just hadn't put my attention on those things. Very different, right? So I'm sure that you and I are similar in some ways. I, c I can imagine, I would, I would expect that we're very similar in a lot of ways because we, we, we had the same training, you know, uh, Suzuki violin training. So that, that means that you have s some of the same strengths and skills that I had, but also some of the same, ready for this word, deficits, right? <laughs> What's a deficit? A deficit is a gap. It's something that you haven't explored. So whereas like your ears are strong, right? For like hearing certain types of melodies when they're played on your instrument, right? But your ears may not be strong for recognizing harmony, right? That is exactly what I experienced. But here's the good news. I can teach you how to hear the harmony, right? You can grow your ears even way beyond where they are right now, you know? And even if you have like absolute pitch, and you recognize, you know, at like most melodies, there's probably a lot of melodies that you can't hear, but you've never tried, and that's why you don't even know that. But I can help you with that too. Basically, just you start trying to hear more stuff, your ears will grow. That's what it is. So that's what I realized. It's like, well, my ears had developed a lot from being in Suzuki, but, there, but I wasn't listening and trying to use my ears on music outside of Suzuki. So that, and once I did start doing that, then my ears grew. Once I started figuring out, well, what is the bass playing? Well, what is the chord progression? And once I started putting my ears to that, they grew more and more and more. And so those are some of the insights I'll hopefully give you. But also as far as me feeling like, oh, I'm just not creative, like my friends in the rock band, I realized that wasn't true. I just had to start by putting attention on practicing in a different way and trying different things. And that's what I'm gonna show you this week. That's what, that's what we're starting off with today. Here's the thing also, a big misconception about um, putting attention into creative musical practice, right? Into, into practice that goes beyond like, you know, your technical work on learning like classical songs and stuff like that, which is great. I'm not mad at that. Okay, I love classical music. It's great. You know, I love Hilary Hahn and it's like Perlman and all those people and uh, Yo-Yo Ma and everybody that plays classical and I admire, you know, technical proficiency and technical mastery and I think it's wonderful. But there, I'm saying there's more to life than that. There's more to life than that. 
it's like, you know, like, like you might hear some of my notes are out of tune or like, you know, maybe I missed this one note, but nobody sounds like me. Nobody in the whole world and the whole universe sounds even remotely like me because I've been spending, because I put my attention on my own creative sound. And so that's the same with all of you here. Nobody is going to sound like you if you put your attention on that, developing your own musical voice outside of interpreting classical works. Of course, you can interpret classical works and nobody's going to sound like you there either, right? But with classical music, there's like a standard. There's like this standard that's established. It's like it's got to be in tune and it's got to be this way and it's got to be clean. And that's all great. But I'm saying there's more to life than just that, too. That's what I'm saying. Yes, and. Yes, and. Have you heard about that? Yes, and. You don't want to say yes, but. You want to say yes, and. Because it's like, yes, I love classical music. And I love improvisation. And I love Latin music. And I love African-American music. And I love pop music. And I love folk music, right? It's a yes, and. It's all beautiful. So, um, so, um. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to go wherever level you're at on this groove. You can either play recurring quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes. And I want you to explore at wherever you're at. Now, remember, I already showed you. You could be on... half that tempo. Well, or you could mix it. All right, so that's what I want you to do. Wherever you're at, you're going to use random notes from the key of D major and just explore. There's no judgment. It's not about was that good or was that bad. It's just do it. You got it. One, two, ready, go. Go. 